Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for giving us another chance and another opportunity to come before you today, Lord, to stir your people up, Lord, and to exhort your people. And Lord, we know that the Holy Spirit is going to build us up today. Lord, we thank you for already flowing in this midst. We thank you for your presence and your power that's already in our midst. We feel it in our praise and our worship. Lord, now, Lord, let it carry over into the Word. Lord, as I look into your Word today, help me to see and behold wondrous things out of your Word. Not only me, Lord, but let those who are hearing this Word let us see the goodness of your word. Let us see the blessings of your word. Let us see something in your word today that will uh, not only comfort us, but it will stir us out of any place of complacency that we may be. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 If you would, turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5, uh, verse 27. Genesis chapter 5, verse 27. And I'm... Uh, when you get there, say, man, uh, boy, I'm, I'm praying to God that uh, the same excitement that he gave me, uh, this title, I pray that it will keep on just just flowing out of me today. Amen. Amen. Um, how many of y'all been just, just wondering about the purpose of your life? How many? Raise your hand. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in the right place there. We're in the right place. I, I advise you to take some good notes today, or, or if you're recording, just record real well and take some good notes so you'll be able to go back home and just chew on this again and as it relates to your purpose. Amen. Genesis chapter uh, 5, verse 27. Let's read it a little bit. Let's stand to our feet and read it. Amen. Amen. Remind me to stay in the pocket right here today. Gotcha. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 5, 27. Look what it said. Let's say it together. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We start a new series, and I am, I know within my heart this will be my next book. Amen. I don't know how long I'm going to stay on it, but I do know that God has got some awful things to say. As it relates to a new title. The title if you're writing today is called Living Life with Your Purpose in Mind. Y'all hear that? I'm making it personal. Living life with your personal, I mean your purpose in mind. Look at your neighbor say, Living Life, living life with, your, with purpose your Purpose in Mind. In other words, all of us, God has given each and every one of us. A specific purpose in life. Amen. And so when we read Methuselah, we read that he lived 969 years and it said he died. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I don't want that on my tombstone. Now we know that Methuselah, uh, uh, Noah became his grandson, but I want to be a blessing. I want him to be able to say that Alan did something great. In his life, now, it's all right to birth children who become great, but how many of you know that God has something for you, a special purpose for you, Amen. to become known in this earth realm? Amen. Amen. We know it might spill over onto our grandchildren. We, as we went on down the list, we know that Noah came through Methuselah, right? But the the thing that got me about that is that he lived 969 years and he died. What does that have to do with purpose? Too many of us are going through life and we don't even know our purpose in life. And when you don't know what your purpose is in life, you waste time. Mm. I said you waste time. Amen. And so purpose is so important. Once you become born again, the next most important thing in your life is to find out what your purpose is in life for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And so we won't be able to cover it all today, but if you stay with me in the series, in order for your purpose to unfold, you're going to need people, you're going to need places, you're going to need things, you're going to need trials and tests and all of this stuff, as we're going to see in the coming weeks, is going to propel us into our purpose. See, a lot of times we are upset 
about things in our life and we we the thing we always say is the devil but sometimes the lord allow the devil to allow things to come into your life to propel you in your purpose amen can i get amen and so i'm also learning that in my amen. purpose my purpose is also built inside your purpose is a mechanism that keeps you from going back into the world can i get amen amen when i found out what my purpose was then it helped me to walk away from the things of the world. When I realized that I was, God had called me to be a, a preacher and a teacher of his word to speak life to people. Then I became so involved in teaching and preaching till <clears throat> things fell off of me. I didn't have time to go back out into the world and do the negative things that were holding me back. Amen. Amen. So the more I walked in my purpose, then I noticed that things fell off of me. I was a weekend alcoholic. Man, on the weekend, that was my time to really help be me. And so when I when I realized that, and then one, one day the Lord says, see, you are delivered by your purpose. If you stop walking in your purpose, see, that's why a lot of people have fallen back into old ways. Amen. They stop, they stop walking in their purpose. Son, never stop walking in your purpose. Because if you stop walking in your purpose, then you become idle. And when you become idle, then you become useless. If you're not careful, you become agitated. And then see, purpose, it helps you to stay on course. Because when God gives you a purpose, I'm just still in the introduction. When God gives you purpose, he also gives you vision. So when you when when I when God showed me my purpose, He gave me a vision, and so when I had my purpose and my vision lining up together, I knew things automatically that I had to get rid of that would hinder my purpose. Amen. See, the Lord said in, in Hebrews twelve one, He said, "Get rid of every sin and every weight that so what be easily beset you." A lot of things in your life when you're on your way to your purpose is not sin, but it's weight. It'll hold you back from your purpose. So I had to make, see, purpose causes us to make rules for ourselves. Even now, I make rules for myself. Because I'm in purpose, I'm walking in my purpose. When I get up, I decide, I lay before, and I ask God, what would you help me to do today? But I also have, my, my time is allotted out. I even, if I'm going somewhere, I say, I need to spend this amount of time there, this amount of time there today. In order, because I got my plans. Because of purpose. Amen. Amen. See, purpose, when you find your purpose, it prevents you from wasting time. See, purpose is so important to know purpose because purpose is like a road map in your life. Mm. See, if I said I was going to go to Jacksonville and then uh, uh, to California and I get on I-10 and I start going east and then I keep sign seeing signs say Jacksonville 165 miles, but I thought I was going to L.A., then I know I need to turn around, don't I? Amen. So purpose gives you what? Direction. Yes, sir. Proverbs 29, 18, what did he say? Where there is no vision, the people, what? They, they perish. perish. Yes. See, whenever, when, when you don't know your purpose, you live a self-destructive lifestyle. I was li living a self-destructive lifestyle because I was not walking in my purpose. Guilty. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. And it's not enough to know your purpose, but you have to walk in it. Amen. Because I know a lot of people have discovered their purpose, but they're still not walking in it. Right. Amen. Amen. And so, purpose is so important. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. And while you're going there, I'm gonna, let me define what purpose is. The definition of purpose is the reason which something is done or created or for which something exists. Mm. In other words, all of us, we were created, God created us, and we exist for a purpose. No matter how bad we may look to others, no matter what we've done with our, in our lives, God, when he first created us, he created us with a purpose in mind. Amen. Yeah. And, and look what Proverb, I mean Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, tell your neighbor God has some good thoughts towards you. God has some good thoughts towards you. See, there may be somebody watching us right now that may be um, just coming over a hangover or, 
or in drugs or alcohol or prostitution or, or gangs or whatever you might be in right now, God still, God never abandoned his thoughts toward us. Mm. We might abandon God, but he never abandoned his thoughts toward us. In other words, when he sees us, no matter what we're going through, you know what? no matter how off course we may be, God is still looking at the best in us. And he's continuing to what? Shape and mold situations and circumstances in your life that maybe would wake you up to see you, to let you see his love for you. So that you can begin to what? Walk in your purpose. Amen. Amen. See, that's the, you see, the enemy, his desire is for us, with his desire, he knew what my purpose was. And so he had to keep me in a place among people who were not going nowhere that would never allow me to manifest who I really am. Amen. See, the, the devil, he knows, he, when he peaks your purpose and he knows where, who you are, he'll try to keep you drunk all the time. Mm -hmm. He'll try to keep you high all the time. Mm -hmm. So you'll never wake up and know what your purpose is. Can I get amen? Amen. And and so that's the enemy's greatest desire is to prevent you from ever walking in your purpose because purpose is so powerful. Mm. Purpose is powerful. Tell your neighbor, purpose is powerful. Purpose is powerful. Amen. So you you need to know that no matter what you those who are looking, no matter what you are going through, God still loves you, and He still has what good thoughts towards you. Look what Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. He was talking to the nation of Israel. They had messed up. Started going after other gods. And God still saying, I still love y'all. Mm. I, I still love y'all no matter what y'all do. I'm still, loving kindness have I drawn you. See, uh, loving kindness is going to draw y'all back. Amen. You know, y'all might be in, the, in the, uh, control of the enemy right now. But I still, my thoughts toward y'all. I still love y'all. I still remember. I still believe in y'all. But see, we have to believe in ourselves. See, we say God will never leave us or forsake us, but truth be told, we leave God. That's right. And when you leave God, now you, in essence, you're walking away from the purpose that he has for you. So God will have to allow things to happen in your life sometimes. Sometimes you touch your body. Sometimes you touch family members in a He'll, uh, he'll allow the enemy to touch people. He'll allow you to get in a situation that'll shake you. Yes. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, all the Bible tells us that all things work out for the, the good of those that love Jesus Christ. See, a lot of things that come against you is not God, but he'll use that to shake you. Amen. To get back on your purpose. Mm -hmm. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. See, other by, everybody else might be thinking negative towards you. But God is still thinking what positive. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to do what? To give you what that expected end. That expected end is your purpose. Tell your neighbor that expected end is the purpose in which God created you. That expected end is the purpose in which God created you. See, God wants us to get to that expected end. That expected end is what? Part of our purpose. Can I get an amen? God wants us to know why we were born. See, if you don't know why you were born, as I'm saying, you don't have any, everything goes in your life. Anything, you just, you just here and there, you, you're not, you're not, you don't, you're not focused. When you don't know purpose, see, purpose helps you to do what? Stay focused. Mm -hmm. True purpose can only be found by having what? Our relationship with Jesus. Having the right, see, if you want to know your purpose, you have to give your life to Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because when we don't know Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us what? That he had to deliver us from the power of darkness and translate us into the kingdom of his dear son, who is Jesus Christ. In other words, you're going to serve either God or you're going to serve Satan. Mm -hmm. With your purpose, but in, in, but God would rather you serve your purpose for His kingdom. Get a good amen. Mm -hmm. 
And so, as it relates to purpose, let's take a look at um, Genesis chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, and then we're going to go to verses um, 13 and 15. Genesis chapter 13, verses 7 through 8. So, our purpose, I want you to see our purpose starts when we give our life to Jesus Christ, because if you give your life to Jesus Christ, now He becomes our friend, so to speak, what Jesus said. He began to show us things. He began to show us things in our life, and he began to help us to see our purpose more clearly. Can I get amen? amen. So um, a good illustration is we can be found right here in Genesis 13 and 7. See, there's some things in your life as it relates to purpose. God is not going to show it to you in the state that you're in. Mm. Let me say that again. When, as it relates to purpose in your life, God, there are some things God will not show and reveal to you until he realizes that you're serious about your purpose, put it that way. Amen. See, a lot of times people say, well, help me, Pastor, to know my purpose. Well, if you're serious about that, God is obligated to show you his purpose, to show you why you were born, because it benefits him. It benefits his kingdom. And as we're going to see, everything about your purpose is to benefit the kingdom. But you might say in your flesh, well, if all about God, what about me? See, when you about God, things, I'm getting ahead of myself, things begin to be released in your life. Can I get amen? amen. Look, look, what, look what happened. Y'all remember when Abraham was trying to take Lot with him? Right. See, there's some things in our life we still trying to hang on and still be godly. <laughs> amen. Maybe one foot in the world, one foot in God. <laughs> But you want God to reveal to you more perfectly your purpose. Hmm. Hey, maybe it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Look at Genesis 37. And, and there was, remember now the, the backdrop of this is, so we won't have to go too deep into this uh, scripture. Abraham and Lot, Abraham tried to bring his nephew with him. Abraham, you know, him and Lot were being prosperous. And um, so there was a little disagreement between the uncle and the nephew, right? Because they had all this cattle. But now we see in verse uh, Genesis 13, 7, look what it says. And there was strife. See, God will allow some strife sometimes to get you where you're supposed to be. He'll allow some strife between your family members on the job or whatever to get you where you need to be. He allows it. Hmm. See, he allowed me to lose one job so I can get a job that was more consistent with my purpose in life. Amen. Tell you, David, it's not always about, it's about how you see things. See, God helps us to see things from his perspective. And I heard Antonio get an interview. God helped him to see some things through what happened to his son. No, he didn't bring that on it, but like he was saying, God allowed him to see life even out of death. Put it like that. Hmm. Genesis 13, 7. And there was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle hmm. and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. Hmm. See? I'm going to say this before I forget. See, a lot of times we're trying to find God's will in the wrong relationship with other people. But we want God to show us up. See, your purpose is so detailed that even the people you marry will help your purpose come to fruition. That's why I say your purpose has to do with people, places, and things, and events. You look at amen. We'll Man. get into that in the coming weeks. Abraham's cattle and, and the herdmen of Lot's cattle and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwell then in the land. Verse 8. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no more strife, no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and my herdsmen and thy herdsmen, for we be brother. In other words, we, we can. So Lot was saying, let's let's not have strife or division, but let's let's be kin and do this thing. God gave him wisdom how to handle the situation. Amen. Now let's skip down to verse 13. I tell you, neighbor, God wants to show you some things. God wants to show you some things as it relates to your purpose. Look at verse 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked. 
and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Now, I wonder why God is talking as this as we talk about purpose. You know, you can have somebody with you and they can pretend that y'all have to, that y'all don't want to court. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You know, you know how it is when, 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 you, when people out there don't mean you no good. You you pretend you you say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian. This I'm a Christian too. Yeah. I love the Lord. I, I, love, I love the Lord too. But God will reveal their heart some way or another as it relates to your purpose. Can I get an amen? Well, so okay. now God is revealing Lot's heart. See, a lot of times when we're trying to walk out our purpose, we have people in our midst that are pretending to be for us. Pretending to have our well-being at heart. Can I get an amen? And so now look at this. It says, But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that, look at that word, after. Look at the names of after. After. And the Lord said to, <clears throat> unto Abram, After that, Lot was separated from him. See, after. Tell your neighbor, God going to show you your purpose more clearly after you do some things. After you do some things. After, after you do some things. See, God will get you in, into a place like that. He'll get you on the right path. But I'm learning that the more I'm trying to walk out my purpose, brother Stanley, God is showing you some things in your life. You got, now you got to get rid of that next. Because if he told you everything you need to get through, you say, oh, I can't do that, Lord. <laughs> so God is wise and he's, he, he has wisdom and he's the perfect father. So he knows that if he can just bring you a little bit along at a time, get some things out of your life. But see, God is also teaching us in this. See, when we when we leading people to Christ, we can't be so hard on them. We gotta have fatherly love. Amen. All right now. To let them come along the way. Consider let sin slowly drop out of their life. Amen. God is speaking to us today. Amen. Because I never saw these scriptures just now. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated. Let's see, to after, after he was separated. Tell your neighbor, God wants to show you some things after you are separated from some things. God wants to show you some God things. God wants to show you some things after you are separated from the things that he wants to show you. Amen. The people. God, oh, look at here, look at here. Because, see, this ties in, I never saw it till just now. The more I isolated and separated myself from people and places and things that meant me no good, I got a revelation. Mm. See, God wants to give us some revelation, but when he tells you to separate from some things, do it. Because he wants to show you something. Look then what he said. Lift up now thine eyes. Now, I like the way he said it. Lift up now. In other words, God said, now I want to bless you. Now I want to show you some things. Mm -hmm. Now that you're following me more perfectly, I want to I want to show you what you almost missed. So Satan will bring people in your life that pretend to be a part of your purpose to prevent God's blessing from coming into your life. Amen. This was his relative. This was his nephew. Can I get an amen? Now you see why Jesus said, if you don't love mother, father, husband, or me, you can't be my disciples. Jesus was being hard. The love he was talking about, you, there got to be a greater love for your relatives. Because if, you, if you're going to walk in purpose, your love for God to fulfill your purpose, it's got to be greater than yeah. anything in your life. That's right. Amen. You gotta die to self. You have to die to self. Die to self. For purpose to be revealed perfectly in your life. I'm gonna say that again. You have to die to self so that pur purpose will be more re revealed more perfectly in your life. Can we get an amen? I like that verse. I'm gonna say it one more time. Lift up now that I know. Tell your neighbor, lift up now your eyes. Lift up now your eyes. Look at the and look what it said. And look. From the place where thou art northward, and southward, and east, and westward. Is that all of it? 15. For all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. So in other words, now we see, Tonyo, 
So you start to your purpose. He said, and to thy seed. You see how this ties in? Mm -hmm. Tell you maybe your purpose is tied to those who are after you and before you. The grandchildren, the children's children. Amen. 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 See, when, when Abraham decided to walk in his perf, uh, purpose more perfectly, it was a blessing even for generations after him. Amen. See, a lot of us in here, we're walking because our ancestors before us, they were walking in God in their purpose. And something that the blessings of them walking in their purpose, it blessed us. For all the land, look at it, all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it. And don't forget out your children to thy seed forever. So our purpose is, decide, is tied into our, even our descendants. That's why it's so important that we walk in our purpose. Walking in our purpose is not only for us, it's for those who come after us. Hmm. Are you with me? See, these are the things that help me walk in purpose. Right? If you're writing this down, living for God is the key to finding purpose in your life. And I already talked about it a little bit. You must be willing to die to self so that God's purpose for your life can do what? Unfold. Romans 12 and 1, it tells us that what? We should become, this quoted for the sake of time. Romans 12, 1 tells us that we should become what a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto the Lord. So when, 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 when you walk in your purpose, you have to sacrifice some things. Amen. And then verse 2 went on to say uh, that, that it tells us that we have to renew our mind. Let's go there. Just, let's go there. I got to go there. Romans 12, 1 and 2. If I have to stop this, I got 10 minutes, I'll just stop because of what I promised y'all. Amen. So what we see here that purpose and sacrifice go together. Tell your neighbor, if you want your purpose to come to fruition, there must be a sacrifice. Amen. See, there must be a sacrifice. See, look at, we got an athlete in here. In order for you to be great, you must sacrifice hours upon hours of shooting free throws, working out with your body, studying the game. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. Purpose does not come without a sacrifice. Anything that God gives to you just because it's your purpose, He still wants you to walk it out. Tell your neighbor you got to walk out your purpose. You got to walk it out. You got to walk it out. So you have to walk it out. Look at Romans 12. One says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Jesus did the hard part. He said it ought to be a reasonable service. And we, with purpose is your reasonable service. Jesus died on the cross so that we could be of service in the kingdom, Pastor Tori, with the gifts that he's given us. See, even your gifts are tied into your purpose for the kingdom of God. Amen? And look at verse 2. Look at verse 2, what it says. See, see, there's a lot of times, Antonio, people can't walk out their purpose because they don't want to change their mind. Uh -oh. They don't want their mind to line up with Christ. Ooh. See, when God kept trying to tell me my purpose, I kept trying to find ways to do alcohol. <laughs> I kept trying to find, I kept trying to find ways to, to tie the thing that was negative about my life in with my purpose. <laughs> but every time I tried to do that, God would give me a scripture to shoot that down. Get a good amen. Amen. So, so, so you have to renew your mind. See, a lot of things, a lot of times, the only thing that is holding us up. Even if we know our purpose is our mind. Tell your neighbor, you got to change your mind. You got to change your mind. And cause your mind to line up with your purpose. Cause your mind to do what? Line up with the purpose of God for your life. See, 
See, our mindset is we you're not going to regret it. You're going to love it more and more. I thought I would regret it, but I love being in God more now than ever. Because I was always an encourager. So the word of God is it's a my way of encouraging you and, 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 and telling you you can do this. You know what I'm saying? No matter how bad it looks, I can show you how you all can you can get out of this. But I used to be in the world, I was showing us how we could get into this. Amen. But now I changed my mindset, I'm showing them how they can get out of this. Can I get an amen? Show them how. And so you have to and you have to be willing. To let God renew your mind. You have to be willing to let God renew your mind to line up with his purpose for your life. Don't let Satan tell you that you're going to miss something. Being no, you're going to find something. You're going to find yourself. And you're going to find your purpose. Thank you, Lord. When I, see, when you can always tell when a person has found their purpose. You know, they speak different. They say things like what Dr. King said. It really doesn't matter with me now. Because right? uh, when you found purpose, can't nothing deter you from it. Yeah. Mm. You can't kill a man that's already dead. Yeah. Yeah. See, purpose makes your life worth living or even dying for. Yeah. Mm. You, and when a per person has found purpose in their life, they speak like Apostle Paul. I find it needful now to stay back for y'all. But to be absent from the body is to be what present with the Lord. But I find it, see, purpose helps you to see that, hey, my purpose in life was tied to other people, so I'll stay back to help them find their purpose. Amen. See, you can all, see, a person, when they have found their purpose, they found zeal in life. They find zeal. They find the passion. That's why I can tell when a person found their purpose. They stay up late. They get up early for what they're doing. Can I get a man? God, see, I'm, I'm, we got a lot to talk about in the coming weeks about purpose. This is my subject, yeah. Because, see, when you find your purpose, it helps you to be more valuable in the kingdom. See, when you find your purpose, life, it, it, it's not hard. Because what God has to tell you when to quit. He has to tell me when to quit studying and, and have a balanced life. Because I love in being in his presence and, and learning how to encourage people more and more because that's what I found to be my passion. To stir people up. Amen. So purpose calls you. See, when, if, you, if a person says, I found my purpose, and then somebody say, well, listen, see, thank you, Holy Spirit. Stop thinking that your purpose is always just inside the four walls. I don't want y'all to think who's watching this that um, purpose is just inside the church. Purpose is where you come into the church, you get fired up, you get charged up to go back out and, and walk in your purpose in life. See, you could your purpose could be a realtor in, in, the, in the world, secular world. But by you got God in you, you, you always see purpose a realtor, as a realtor from a godly perspective. Amen. So you say, well, I understand that God has called, and part of my purpose is being a realtor, so now I know I need the people in the kingdom who don't understand realty and how to get homes I'm supposed to help them. Amen. Can I get amen? amen? Don't ever think your purpose just inside the four walls. Start looking higher. See, the four, we come in here, we get charged up to go out to do what? <clears throat> Greater things. To, to turn the, what, the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's kingdom. Amen. Is this making sense? Amen. Hallelujah. And be not conformed to this world, what? But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the word of God, renew your mind. And I heard him talking about how he, when he gave the interview the other day, I'm just, man, I'm just loving it. And you hear the word come out. In other words, now the Lord is renewing his mind to his purpose. And so since God has renewed his mind to his purpose, he had the scriptures to go along the back of what he was saying. Can I get amen? You can tell when a person has found their purpose, it begins to leak out of them. Leak out of them in words. I told him, I said, son, I, I hear your words, and it's coming across when people feel it. I said, that's what makes a great speaker. So when you're speaking from your 
And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may see there's a possibility that you can drop purpose. You can you can give the wrong people. And they'll get you off your course. <clears throat> you may, you may, you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Is that all of it? See, if you want to know the will of God, you got to let Him renew your mind. Mm. You got to die to self so that God can live what? More perfect. Lord, I'm going to stop there. I promise y'all. Lord, it's hard to stop, man. I tell you, when a person finds it right, I'm preach to y'all hours and hours, but for the sake of time. We thank those of you who have watched us today by YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, hit your subscribe button and keep it going. Amen. Keep it going on with your friends. How many of y'all were blessed today?